But for this length of hair, it's like you can use a comb, you know, in certain areas, but when it's really low, yeah, I like to use a brush. I use a brush and a comb, just depending on how long it is. But it's, it's very important to establish like all the cow licks, make sure everything is going everywhere. You got some people who they start cutting and then you got some curls that's going this way, this, that, and the other, but had they took the time to brush it and comb it down, you know, so I think that's very vital. I like to use my masters all the way closed, and then some people start all the way at the bottom. I'm gonna get that anyway, so I'm not gonna waste time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some time off my haircut by just starting up in this area right here. So you're getting a ball fade, so I'm starting with it all the way closed. And I'm just giving myself enough room so when I do come back around with either the liners, I like to use a five out. With either the liners or the five out, I got room where I won't touch the line that I, I made. So that way now that line is gonna be really easy to get out. And some people try, I mean, it just, it's years of, of perfection for some people to make the line perfect, but that line don't have to be perfect. It's just that I'm just silly like that, if you will, because I like my line to kind of have some perfection to it. And then when I was in school, we used to actually, you know, start the line at the temporal area, then we'd go around and do this, but because I've been doing it so long, I just kind of know where it, where it falls at, so to speak. He's not getting a high and tight, but the fact of the matter is, is that it's like if you do it too low, especially depending on the length of the hair, the fade will be dropped too low. You know what I'm saying? And then you want the baldness to kind of be up high enough where, so you'll pretty much kind of see. So this is not considered a high and tight. A high and tight would be more so up in this area. If I started to line up in there, that would be a high and tight, but I'm kind of starting at tempore area and go kind of make it balanced all the way around. And I tell people too, you know, a lot of ways, like some people hold their clippers like this and some people like, but holding your clippers is it's a utensil. So it's almost like writing. When you write, you write like that, right? So I hold my clippers where I really have complete control of my clippers and I can kind of feel what I got going on. If, I'm, if you're writing like this, you can't feel what you have going on, right? But if you write like this, you can feel what's happening. So the same thing with your clippers. If you're holding your clippers like this, you just, you just whacking that hair. But if you hold it like this, you're being more creative, if you will. So that's why I hold my clippers like that. So a five out is basically five zeros. So it's like close to liners, right? So some people, some people hair is, um, some people hair really can't take a five out or, or liners or even shavers. And a lot of the, the newer generation barbers now, it's like they making that line, they do the shavers, then they still got this hard line in there that they trying to get out with. Stop doing that, just make it easy for yourself. So I just literally just use my masters all the way closed, so now I'm using the five out and I'm not gonna touch the other line and I'm making it just as bald. You can do the same thing. So why make it like, they, they're hard headed, you know, that's why I say. Because then you got that line in there, you can't get out and the haircut don't look complete. It don't look graduated. It may be faded up in this area, but then you still got this hard line you're trying to get out. And then you also have to judge by according to, according to the person's scalp. Like light-skinned people, you really gotta be careful by, by putting up, cause when we was, when I was in barber school, we used to take the liners and put a line in there. But I knew how to get the line out. A lot of people now don't know how to get the line out. But if you put it in a light-skinned person head, whose skin ain't that really that good, it's like you'll still see the, the redness and the line in there and it, it'd be difficult to get out. So you just kinda gotta be careful in that area. And the re I don't use guards. And the reason that I don't like to use guards is number one, back in school, we had guards that just pretty much clipped on each side and then you'd be cutting hair. And when you cut hair, it be done fail because it done got so, it done got so weak on the edges, right? And then it be done fail. And uh, like, man, but we was taught to comb fade when we was in barber school, we comb fade. And uh, the guards, like plastic wavers. And because plastic wavers, you know, it's gonna change the dynamic of the haircut when metal is gonna give you I mean, the steel is gonna give you perfection, which means that what you cut is what you cut. With the plastic guard, depending on how soft, how soft you press versus how hard you press, the, 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 the teeth of the blade is gonna, is gonna move. So it can, be, it can be like this in one area, and then when you get here, it might squeeze, which means it's gonna change the dynamic of your haircut, then it might open back up and so on and so forth. That's just like um, battery-operated clippers. You know, I mean, I can use them, yeah, I can, but to me, I feel like it still is not, there's nothing like consistent current. It's like, I want that all the time, not, you know what I'm saying? Because then you're gonna still get a, a, a deficiency in your haircut because now it's gonna start wearing down depending on how long you use them, if they're not plugged up. So that's, that's just me, man, because of the fact that I, 
I'm just kind of like a, a, a neat freak as it comes to like perfection and consistency, so to speak. So back in the day, you know, we, we had one pair of clippers, man, where we took and did everything with them clippers. Like we cut the head, we I'll take a screwdriver and adjust the blade and we align with it. We do the parts with it. My clients had blood parts, they had blood liners. We had to figure it out because the clippers would be so hot though. You have to let them sit down for a second before, you know, but then of course we started getting more clippers and you know, so you pretty much, you, you make it, you make it work for yourself. Like, so even if you, even if you did one side, so for instance, let's just say you have some people that may do a whole haircut. They, they, let's just say if you had a fro, they'll cut the head, they'll shape the hair, they'll do the beard, and then they'll take the liners and they'll line everything. Of course, your liners gonna get hot because you're trying to line everything. So I just kind of found ways, and it's just really, it comes with, with how you cut and what, what's comfortable for you. So let's just say, for instance, if I was doing a, if I was doing a fro, what I would do is, is that I would taper it first. Of course, I pick it out first, I would taper it first, and then I would line around in this area, which means that now the clippers that I was tapering with, now them taking the chills, and they resting, so down they, they not gonna get hot. Then I will line, once I get done lining in this area, then I will put my liners down, then I will shape it up, then I will line this area, and then I will do the, then I will start cutting the beard, and then I'll line the beard. So my clippers never get hot, because I figured out how to make it work for myself, you know what I'm saying? So even as it relates to a blade, so the difference, the blades that get the hottest are the blades that, that are not ceramic. Uh, so when you're dealing with blades that are non-ceramic, which blades like this, then they're gonna get a little bit hotter and your client will probably let you know. Uh, the way his hair is, you have to be careful. So I did the first line first. So you got some people who they fade and then they do the top. I don't like to do that because I feel like if you fade and do the top and he decide, yeah, man, I wanna, I wanna one on the top. So now you don't cut this area kind of one and a half bound now, if you do a one on the top because he want a one on the top, now you gotta you gotta now man manipulate this to make this add up to the one because otherwise it's gonna be lighter up in here and it's gonna be darker up in there, right? So now you're t you're shaving off more time than it take you for that for the haircut, all right? So this is a one and a half, but I know what he want. I know he wants a one a, but I'm just only showing you guys this because. Always start up. One of the one of the ways that some people mess up, I forget, I forget, ugh, I forget when this was. But this guy, he was pissed. Matter of fact, it was it was in this barbershop. This guy was pissed, man, not long ago. And he was like, man, they cut my waves out. They cut my waves out. You know, because he came in and he told him, he said, yeah, man, give me a one. Give me a one. Okay? This is a one and a half. This is a one. This is a one, right? So you got to know your, if he told me to give him a one, I would start up with a one and a half first. I, because I know what's gonna happen. And when I start with a one and a half first, he would be like, okay, yeah, that's what I want right there. Had I gave him a one, it's gonna make him look like he bald, right? So you got to know your tools. You got to know your tools. And then you have to know your tools against the person's hair, right? So his hair pretty much is straight, it lays, so you really got to be careful and you got some people that just take and they just cut from the front to the back. Well, the reason I don't do that, and I'm going to go to the blade and I'm actually going to use which is my one and a half. The reason I don't do that is because of the fact of you're not going to have any consistency. Just like if you're trying to shape some hair, there's no way that in the world you can shape a head from the front to the back and be consistent in a circle all the way around. That's impossible because your hand is going to shake and you're going to waver. So you do it in sections. You peel it off in sections. Same thing as this. He, he has cowlicks in his hair, right? And cowlicks basically just mean he got a nice graded hair, you got curl, wave pattern, right? So at the end of the day, he may have some hair that go that way on this part of his hair. But if I'm just going straight through it, I'm not gonna see that. And then if I don't see that now, I don't put a big hole in his head when all I had to do is just take my time and then just go and do it in sections, so to speak, right? You have a client that that's comfortable not only with your professionalism um the service you give them they they don't mind coming and they don't mind paying that price but you got to get them to that you got to get them to that point first right um so even in the middle so especially with people that straight hair now one of the things one of the issues that a lot of people have is they don't know how to they don't know how to distinguish that 
the, everybody here goes in a circle. Everybody in the whole world here go in a circle, right? But some people more than others. Some, it may comb this way, it may go this way, so on and so forth. But you just got to establish where that, where that circle is because it's almost, like a, it's almost like making a wig, right? When you make a wig, you got to have that one point and then you take and you, you put everything else around that one point, right? Same thing as it relates to everybody's hair when you're cutting it. So you just got to kind of figure out that's why you brush and comb it first to establish that. And then when you're cutting it, you pretty much just kind of cut it in that, in that motion. So that way you won't make it so noticeable. It's going to be there, but you know, it won't be so noticeable. And then the other thing too is that some people, when they get to the other side of the hair, like I don't fade with my left hand, but I do everything else with my left hand. Things that you can't mess up, even though it's strong, but things that you can't mess up with your left hand, like do it, make it stronger because it's, it's awkward and weird to cut like that versus just putting a clipper in your left hand like this. You can't mess up, just take your time because you're not fading, you're not being that creative, if you will. Only thing you're doing is just making it more convenient for you to be able to cut this versus having to cut it like that because you're not gonna get the consistency you need. So just use your left hand, cut it on that side, Like even when you shaping a even even when you shaping a, a fro, even when you shaping a fro, I tell people all the time that um like if you shape a fro this way on this side, then you can't come on the other side because you're you don't want to change hands and shape it that way because now you got a fro going in a circle. You got to come on your other side and you got to shape it this way so that way everything is going the same way, right? So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna fade this a couple different ways, right? So I literally can give them a whole haircut with all of the blades, with all of the blades. So, what you do, so this is a two blade right here. So the reason I'm gonna use a two blade is because, well I'm showing y'all different ways, but I'm using all my blades. So what you wanna do, now you got some people, I guess I'll do this too. You got some people who, they'll make, they'll make another line. Do I wanna show y'all? I don't wanna show y'all like that but I'll, I'll explain it to y'all. So when I was in cutting hair back, you know, in the heyday, we would make the first line and then we'll make another line. Then we'll fade that line out. Then we, we fade the other. So we'll make like three lines. We'll make one line, which is the ball line. Then we make another line. Then we make a thicker line. So now we have, okay, I'm only fade up to that point and then I'm gonna fade that line out and so on and so forth, right? So, I'm really big on graduation. And graduation meaning that if, if a haircut is supposed to be faded, I don't want to see no lines of demarcation nowhere. I want it to have graduation from the top all the way to the bottom. Even as it relates to people getting sponge. <laughs> and up in that area, you know, it's like, even though they're getting all of this ball, but there still needs to be established, like, <coughs> excuse me, there still needs to be an establishment of, of of where the where the graduation is. Not I, I don't I don't personally like haircuts where it looks like all of this is faded. They look like somebody just plopped a big mop on their head. That that's not creative. That that's to me. I feel like that's anybody can do that. You know what I'm saying? It might be clean. It might be precise. But where's the where's the creative in it? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of these new barbers and even people, man, that be playing ball, they don't. And Starbucks, they got the best tea ever. Come on, Starbucks. Yeah, I, I need y'all, man. Little solicitation for Starbucks tea, medicine ball, so they can produce me. Hey, good morning, Julian. All right, so, so I'm gonna start with the two, and what I'm doing is, is that I'm actually depending on, depending on what I need, I'm actually turning the two into a bigger, into a bigger blade, and the way I'm turning it into a bigger blade, just so you guys know is it's, I'm, I'm lifting it up. So if you, if you hold, if you hold the, the blade right on the head, you're gonna take more hair off, right? But the more you tilt it in, 
you're making the blade bigger. So I literally could turn this on and go all the way up his head and I got this big old imaginary blade on here, like, right? But the more you lean it in, you're making the blade smaller and smaller and smaller. So if, if let's just say if you only have one pair of clippers and I'm gonna show you when I use my other clippers, you just lift up like that. And what I don't like to do is I don't like to establish no line. That's why I said I was gonna show y'all and put another line, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna make no line. I just wanna fade it coming down. Yeah, you can consider it fading down, yep. And then back in the day when we, um, when I used to comb fade all the time, I used to comb fade all the time, this is how we would comb fade. Now you have a couple different ways of comb fade. You can comb fade by taking the, taking the hair, doing that, and then doing that, which uh, take a while. But then one of the ways we establish is you just take, and what the comb is basically doing, what do y'all think the comb is doing when you comb fade? It's like a guard, right? So what we would do is, our way of comb fading is, and you always have to, we was always taught, always keep something in your left hand or whatever hand you're, you're not cutting with, always keep something in that, in that hand. And then with the comb fade, basically I'm doing the same thing, right? But then in order to make it lighter with the comb fade, we would take, we would take our masters all the way open and then pretty much do the same thing as it relates to the comb fade. And I'm just, and I'm, I have my, my blade in front of my, in front of my comb more so than, than over it, especially when it's lower. But I'm just using that as a, kind of like a, a guide, right? So what I established, what I established is, is that I figured out how to, I figured out how to take just one pair of clippers, good morning, I took, I established how to take one pair of clippers and just figured out how to manipulate like the whole haircut with one pair of clippers, right? Because I, I feel like I understand hair. So now, instead of using, and which helps on my time, because I don't have to go back and keep switching blades and keep switching clippers, just take one pair of clippers and I can do the same thing by just manipulating it and going up and then picking. So some people, I call it my picking effect, and some people when they pick, they try and pick with the whole clipper. You don't need the whole clipper because of the fact that you might only have one area that, that you're trying to get out. And if you use the whole blade, then you go cut more than what it is you want to cut. And as you can see, I'm pretty much using my thumb. I'm using my thumb to kind of put my lever where I need my lever to be. So I just kind of establish where I don't need, I don't need a, a comb. I don't need no guard. I don't need nothing but one pair of clippers in order to do the same haircut. And I can make it look the same as far as consistency all the way around the board. Even up in that area. And I use my finger kind of as my, I use my finger as my, my like my, 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 my stepping stone in order for me not to go too deep in there. So, and I'm cutting kind of like across, across the grain. And when you see me get in the bigger areas where I'm lifting up, I'm just pretty much making, I'm making my, my blade bigger. So that way I won't cut too much out of that area. And, and everybody is not expected to, to have to do that, so to speak, but I'm just saying that, um, you know, when you, when you cut so many heads, you know, like, man, you know, cutting 25 to 38 heads every day, what I used to do, you, you can't, you don't have time to be, you know, taking an hour and a half, two hours, because I never would have gotten done. And one of the key things is, is that when you schedule your appointments, if you know that you got an appointment every half an hour, then, you know, you, you set a goal and you don't have time to waste. And it's like you, you will speed up your time because of the fact that you want to be on schedule and you will speed up your time like that, if, if you ask me, versus saying, well, I'm just going to schedule me a person every hour and because I schedule every hour, I got time when I got this ball fade in my chair on this shorty that's only gonna take me, that should take me 10, 15, 20 minutes, if that, but because I have an hour, I'm just gonna take my time and make it be what it's gonna be. And then honestly, like with women, I knew women barbers, like when I was young, a woman barber used to cut me and my dad's hair. And you know, women, they, they, had, a, they had a comb in between their fingers and you know, they, they doing that and they cutting and yeah, and no, nah, I don't got time for that. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. You know, I got I got other customers. And then in some cases, I don't even want my customers to talk. 
Like, uh-uh, you move your head. Uh-uh, be quiet. Tell me afterward. Mm-mm. Because to me, I feel like sometimes, you know, well, they, they can slow you down a little bit, you know. Sometimes you people have to tell me, like, just shut up and talk. I mean, cut. <laughs> I got to go. I'm like, yeah, my bad, man. And then your mirror is very vital, man. Your mirror tells you everything. Your mirror tells you everything. Like, you can look in on your haircut, but then if you look in in the mirror, the mirror is going to tell you everything you need to know about what's happening with that haircut. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. If his hair was the type of hair that I can just kind of come down in, like... I could literally fade his hair by coming down like that and almost be done with the haircut. But because he have straight hair and because you have to do so much in this situation, it's not just that easy to do with him. <laughs> so you have to pay more attention to everything that's going on because every, it's, it's almost like round cell hair, you know? Like when you're dealing with straight hair, every little hair can make a difference in, in, in how that fade is gonna look, so to speak. I don't like to use guards because I know that I want, I want him to get up out this chair like, you should be able to cut your client's hair and when they come back, they could just get a lining and it look like they got a whole haircut, right? But when you only cut it for that moment, like all of the enhancements, you do the enhancements wrong, you cut it for that moment, you know, you use guards that waver, you know, after a couple days, they're like, man, you know, my hair don't look the same, right? Because of the fact that there was inconsistency when this metal is gonna tell the truth. That's why a lot of people, a lot of people aren't able to use, and I'm, I'm going to do the rest of the haircut with, um, with just the blades. A lot of people don't know how to use just the blades because it's, it's only one blade. It's only one blade, and it doesn't have the, the detachable, I mean, it doesn't have the, um, the adjustable lever to it, right? So that's why you have to know how to manipulate it. Like this one and a half, I'm manipulating it in the, in the areas that's a little bit more heavier, but then when I get down here, I can lay it all the way down and get what it is I need and what I want. And I and because of the fact that I know where every area is that I'm trying to cut, um, you know, I, I don't have to look at the other side to know how it's gonna look over there because of the fact that I know, I, I kinda got my eye on where it's supposed to be, right? And again, stuff like that, it comes in time, but you just gotta know every point of the head. That's why, you know, being in that book in barber school is very, very important for a lot of people, especially when they don't know the game like that, because it'll show you the different aspects of the hair. So you got the, the occipital, you got the crown, you got the temporal area. You have different areas that you just kind of pinpoint to know, you know, this is how high I'm going to cut up or this is where this needs to go, so on and so forth. I know how to draw, so I'm an artist, right? And in, in barber school, in the book, you're taught that barbering is an art and it's a science, right? So I contribute, like I was that one that, that colored perfectly inside the lines when I was little and, and I got like good penmanship and all of that kind of stuff, right? So I portray that in my haircut. Like I, I used to make my outer line dark when I was coloring <laughs> and then I would color inside and then I would make this part of the picture dark but then I would shade this lighter and so on and so forth and it had to look a certain way otherwise, you know, you got some people that color and it'll be darker right here. That wasn't me. It's like I would, I would literally, so I think I took that and applied that more so into me cutting hair. And then just like, I don't, you know, I think, ooh, to be honest with you, man, I, I think church, <laughs> church kind of helped because we were kind of taught perfection, if you will, you know what I'm saying? This had to be perfect. That had to be like this, that, and the other. And I just kind of, everything that I kind of do, you know, I just make, and then too, because I'm like that, I kind of, I kind of, do my clients like that because I feel like they can appreciate my, my, my structure and my, my you know, I, I won't say perfection, but striving for excellence. I think they can appreciate that a lot more. And that's why I say, man, you know, a lot of people, and, then, and, and it's not always, it's not always, you know, you even doing the best haircut. It's not always that, you know, it can be, it can be the fact that, that you're a nice person, that you got a, a, a great, you know, an atmosphere, you know, you on time, you know, you can do my hair early or, you know, when I come to get my hair cut, I don't have to wait that long, you know what I'm saying? And because hair grow back, even though I don't look at it like that, if you mess my hair up, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> That's why I kind of like how the demeanor I have when I cut people hair, because like, man, I, don't, I know how I would feel if my hair was messed up. So I, don't, I wanna make sure that when he get up out of my chair or she get out my, up out of my chair, you know, their hair is superb. So I kind of look at it like that as well. 
But uh, but man, you know, it's really it's really so easy to be honest with you. It's really so easy to to be successful in this industry because it's not going nowhere. It's inevitable. It's not going nowhere. Whether you're doing hair, whether you're cutting hair, whether you're doing nails, whether you're doing aesthetics, it's not going anywhere. But the the issue, I feel like the biggest issue with most, while most people can't make the money that they want to make is what what do y'all think? What do y'all think that is? Before I say, why y'all think a lot of people in this industry can't make as much money as they as they would like to make? What y'all think? Consistency, consistency. That's that's all. That's all it's that's all it's developed into. Consistency. In this business, you gotta be consistent. If you're not consistent. You, you're not going to make no money like that. You, if you're not consistent, you're basically going to be making enough money to be able to, you know, get your little things done, if you can even get that done, and that's it. It's not going to be no over the mark. But if you're consistent, meaning that if you say, hey, I'm working from this time to this time, and stick to it. Treat it like, treat it like I don't, I don't want to say a regular job because we make more money than people that's been on, that have been on their jobs for years. We can make more money in one day than some people make on their jobs in two weeks. That's real, right? So you have to think, so why won't people take, take advantage of that? <laughs> why won't people take advantage of that? And the fact of the matter is, is that, man, look, let me tell you something. My history in this game, cutting hair for 36 years, man, I used to cut hair in my basement for $3 first, and then I went up to 5 bucks, and, and I would make, in one night, between me and my friend, we would make a few hundred dollars, man, cutting hair in one night, right? That was all for five dollar haircuts, but we were there and we were consistent. And then I went in my shop, my first shop, and I started doing commission. Commissioning worked well because of the fact that I really didn't understand. I seen the older barbers doing commission, and you know that really didn't work so swell because of the fact that honestly people were stealing. You know, people was they was compounding the tickets, and you know they weren't stealing money per se physically. But they were still in haircuts, which means that if they services, if they services amounted, let's say, to two hundred dollars, they might only cut a hundred dollars worth. But they put an extra hundred dollar worth of tickets on on the spindle. And that means that now the draw was short. Basically, that makes sense. Right. So, you know, payroll was really man. My payroll every week was like five thousand dollars or so every week when I was only 19, 20 years old, believe it or not. And then I went to boot rent. Well, Booth rent really don't work good because of the fact of it's like you're only charging one booth rent and it doesn't allow it doesn't allow the the shop and the owner to really grow. And most importantly for me, it don't allow it don't allow the, the service provider to grow because of the fact that they're always stuck in this box with no exit plan. Right. Meaning they don't ever pay taxes. I was one of them people. I made cash money every day. I made 15, when I was 19, 18 years old, I was making $1,500 to $2,000 a week off of $10 haircuts. Haircuts was only $10 and I was making that much money every week at that age. And that was back in the, <laughs> the, the, the old ages, right? But, but when it came time, so if I made $100,000 a year and I went to go get that car, how am I gonna prove it? How am I gonna prove it? If I'm not properly paying my taxes, if I'm not proper. So you got to go to the to, to your CPA and say, hey, man, I did make this much money, blah, 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 blah. So not, now you end up ordering the IRS because you reported and so on and so forth. Who wants to go through that? So for me, I feel like, man, set your service providers up to succeed in a way that you, you whether you're paying booth rent, whether you're renting a suite or whatever that looks like. You still paying what? Tax. You still paying the tax. You still paying the tax, and if you if you are if you are paying booth rent, or if you are renting a suite, you're really being double taxed because of the fact that now you're responsible for your own suite, you're responsible for reporting what you made paying that booth rent, and at some point in your life, you know you want to buy a house, you want to buy a car, you want to have a family. So at some point in your life, things are gonna have to start adding up. If I walked away from this chair right now and got done for the day because I didn't feel well and I had 15 more clients and I needed that money, who, who, who gonna pay me? Who gonna pay me? Nobody. Ain't nobody, you're not gonna give me your money that you made. You're not gonna give me the money that you made. So why not 
set yourself up to have benefits, pay taxes, get AFLAC, 401k. So that way when you retire, you got something to retire to, man. So I actually, I didn't want to open up another shop until, until I was able to make sure that the people who, because having a barbershop, I'm sorry, is overrated. Having a barbershop and a salon is overrated. Would you, would you agree? You think it's kind of overrated a little bit? And I only said that because of the fact that you've been in the industry longer than anybody in here. It's overrated because, huh? It's tiring. Absolutely. It's very tiring because it's like you're dealing with so many different personalities. And, and then people, people, they don't want to do right. If you charge, let's just say you charge $150 booth rent. And you say, hey, y'all, I need to go up $5 on my booth rent. Oh, no, man. Why you got to go up? It's only $5. My rent went up. The utilities went up. You know what I'm saying? Everything went up, so I'm going up $5, right? So that's why I established the slide and scale situation because with a slide and scale, it's like you give the service providers an opportunity to come in. A lot of people that pay booth rent, they run, they run from the shops because of the fact that they can't afford that booth rent because they didn't cut any heads that amounted to what? It's like, well, I spent a little money I needed these few days, so now my booth rent is due on Saturday. My booth rent is $200, but... I didn't make nothing but $200 this week because, and I had to spend that money. So now, you know what, no, I, I don't want to work in the shop no more. And you run from shop to shop to shop instead of just establishing something. And I'm not going to say I hate to say, but Walmart has got to be like one of, if not the best game in town. It's got to be. Because guess what? You have built-in clientele. And who does it depend on, who does it depend on to get that money from that built-in clientele? No, it depends on the service provider being what? Consistent. That's it. That's it. I know he going to be at work because guess what? He got to get his hair cut again. He got to get his hair cut again. Sometimes he'll wait a whole month. You, you can braid the side of his head. Like if you cutting hair, I, I ain't cutting. Okay, I'll just wait. Let me know when you're cutting, bro. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you know, but people still got to get a haircut. That's why it's inevitable, man, with this industry. With this industry, we would never, ever be without work. If we are without work, who fault is it? The service provider. Bottom line. We don't get along with each other in the shop. Why don't we get along with each other in the shop? Why, how, is, how, is that even, how is that even possible as grown adults? And one of the reasons that I... Let, let's talk about sweets. Why don't I like sweets? Huh? Sweets ain't no... Sweets just depend on you as one individual. That's what sweets depend on, you as one individual. Which means, which means that if you're not at work and you have clients and you have a client that needs to get a hair, I gotta have my hair cut, you're pretty much sending them to somebody else to get a service done that they may feel more comfortable in, they may get another vibe to say, oh man, I like this vibe a little better, versus you done built a community and a family in the other shops that you're in and it's like, okay, I'm not gonna be here next week because I'm going on vacation. All right, I'm gonna let Nicole service me because you 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 establish a relationship with everybody up in there. So don't 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 feel away if a client say because at the end of the day, even though you have people who are your clients, but they're still some sense of client of the shops, right? So if somebody come in and say, hey um, hey uh so and so so and so are you are you busy right now and it can be one of your regular clients and maybe they forgot to make an appointment or maybe they couldn't make an appointment and you cut their hair all the time and they come in and say you busy right now i got somebody ah but i, I gotta go out of town you know what i'm gonna let this person cut my hair don't feel away because they still in the shop don't feel away because you still e even if they decide okay you know i like the way they cut my hair better whatever the case may be you're still building you're still building a community where everybody's still able to eat and everybody still is going to be okay right so like, yeah, man, good morning. So I think that that's, that's very, very vital. And if you see somebody, man, that, that's, uh, that's kind of slipping along the way, pull a coattail. Let them know. Hey, bro, we got this. I, I want, one of my biggest pet peeves is to, to, drive, to drive past a shop. You said you want your own barbershop. You want your own shop. But especially on Friday and Saturday morning. And it's 10, 11 o'clock. You still got the bars on your, on your, the gates on your doors. And the, the shop ain't open yet. How's that even possible? <laughs> How, like, like that, 
that man, that that drives me nuts, man. You said you wanted your own shop. And I feel like you shouldn't open up a shop if you don't have enough clients to take care of your shop on your own. Bottom line. That's it, that's all. So what's the concept again? I'm just gonna take these liners and I'm gonna fade that line out. Without no comb or nothing, just the brush, right? Okay, you see it? Now, now you see it, right? Now you see it. All right. I could if I wanted to, but I but why would I why would I do myself like that when I got other stuff? I'm just trying to show you a matter of of understanding understanding hair pretty much. And I'm gonna explain after I do it. Cause I'm really just doing this to show out a little bit, but then just show y'all that, you know what I'm saying? I'm a beast with these clippers. That's just kind of what I do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I understand hair a little bit. So, so how did I do that though? So you, you, you remember, you remember being in school and that's why I say like, I could do the whole haircut like that, but why, why do that? I don't need to show off for the whole haircut. I just want to show you I can do it. But my point being is, is that, so, to Adam's question, he's like, you know, what else attributed to the way you cut hair? So, y'all remember being in school when y'all had to do them pictures and they made you do the pencils and dot? You had to dot the whole picture with the pencils? That's the same thing that you're doing with, with picking, with, with the liners. I took and I'm taking each, each area and I'm just picking at it in order to make it fade and amount to what it needs to be. So, again, it's just really understanding hair. You know, you're not expected to do that. You know, I could use a razor and, and cut his hair. Um, I don't have my razor with the guard on there, but you got a razor that have, you know, the disposable razors that come with the, like the different size guards. It got like the holes in there. It got small slits, then it got big slits and so on and so forth. You can use that and you can cut a whole hair with that as well. So I can literally cut his waves with that. I can fade up with it and do the whole haircut with that. So when y'all see people doing that, that is real. So, so when you fade, so when you fade, in order to get the fade, and I'm taking y'all to school a little bit, how do you get a fade to be like, really truly faded huh especially if everybody here go around so if his hair going like that am, am i gonna get a good fade cutting right in at it or do i gotta cut across the grain across the grain so when you see me going like that i'm cutting across the grain so it's like if it's coming down like that i'm going across it so that way it can be a blend but if i go straight in at it then it's more so gonna be more blended like down at the bottom where it's lighter versus when the hair gets you know, a little bit thicker, so to speak. So when the hair does grow in this direction, because you know this side is going this way, and that's, I think that's my easier side to fade. But once it's laying so hard on this side, mm -hmm. it seems like it's, it's so much harder to to get the lines. Across. Well, probably because of the fact that depending on if you if you left hand or the right hand, and depending on how you're able to hold your clipper. But also, I, I'm gonna say this to you guys, and I think that this is very pertinent. Like, I'm, I'm very analytical, so I pay attention to everything. I think that's what made me a, a good instructor when I used to teach full time, because even when I was on the floor, you, you, you can't, I don't care if I had students all the way around, I can be cutting hair and I'm, I'm paying attention to everybody. And I just feel like, like you know how a haircut is supposed to look. You know how a haircut is supposed to look. Am I, am I lying, right? So. Don't let somebody get out your chair and you look in the mirror and they got this, this crazy line of demarcation. Like, I, I shouldn't have to tell you that, hey, that's not fading all the way. Or, hey, you know what I'm saying? Uh, get that a little bit more, right? You should want to do that because of the fact that, you know, if you're not happy with it, then what makes you think the client? And some clients, they, they may not care like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you have some, some seasoned gentlemen who come in and, you know, as they call it, they just want their ears lower. Hey, man, can't come in here, you know. Lower my ears for me, and they just they just want a haircut. They want the hair off their ears, right? And then you can shape their fro and give them this best haircut. And then what do they do when they take their hat off 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 the, the hat rack? <laughs> Plop it right back on their head, <laughs> cause they just wanted their ears lowered. They don't care nothing about it being neat. But me on the other hand, my grandma used to try and play, pray for me when, my, when I be done cut my hair at church. When I be on the drums and I do, I, oh, get your hand off! Don't don't touch my head. And it could be, the service would be high, boy. I'm like, man, don't touch my hair. Man. I just cut my hair. I just did my gumby. I just shaved my fro. And my grandma would open up a bottle of oil and just pour it down my head, man. I'm like, ah, grandma.